Hi, my name is Rojin, and in this series of tutorials, I'm going to talk about SPA5 and Panoramics. For more information about 3D sound and ambisonics, please check out Mariam Givinashvili's tutorials on this topic. The audio you heard at the beginning of this tutorial was a piece I composed using Max, and the specialization was achieved through SPA, which is a Max external. Most of the theoretical context that I will discuss comes from three papers written by Thibault Carpentier. I will provide a link in the description for those papers. In the first tutorial, my focus will primarily be on the architecture of SPAT as it's important to comprehend it in order to utilize it um, according to your needs. Now, let's address the first question, what is SPAT? SPAT is a real-time audio engine developed at IRCAM since the early 90s. It's designed for sound specialization, sound diffusion, and artificial reverberation. It's primarily used in a Max environment, which is a visual programming language for music and multimedia. SPAT is essentially a library of processors that allows users to control and manipulate the spatial qualities of sound. It's structured around feedback delay network reverberation units and panning modules. We will come back to that later. These processors can be adjusted and controlled through a high-level interface, which enables users to specify and modulate the acoustic characteristic of synthesized room effects based on perceptually relevant criteria. The application of SPAT spans across different fields, um, such as live sound, post-production, mixing, um, sound design, sound installation, etc. It provides a powerful tool for um, creating immersive audio experiences, controlling the placement and movement of sound sources, and adding realistic room effects to audio content. Let's take a closer look at the overall architecture of SPAT. The first module is the input module, which is responsible for source pre-processing. This module handles tasks such as filtering the source signal and simulating effects like the Doppler effect or air absorption. Doppler effect is a change in frequency due to the relative motion between the source and the listener. So for example, when a police car um, passes by, you might um, perceive a change in the frequency of the siren as it passes by. That's basically the Doppler effect. And the air absorption is attenuation of sound as it travels through air. The input module prepares the source signal for further processing. The next module is um, the room module, which generates the reverberation effect. The reverberation is divided into four temporal segments, and each segment is filtered independently. This allows for precise control and manipulation of the characteristics of the reverberation over time. The four sections of the reverberation are later panned according to a simple space-time model. The early reflections, or R1, surround the direct sound, while sections R2 and R3 are spatially diffused, creating a sense of spaciousness. The final module is the output module. This module is responsible for decoding or transcoding the process signals based on the specific playback system. It ensures that the signals are appropriately adjusted for the playback system, including loudspeakers, EQ and delay or gain alignment. This module ensures that the audio signals are optimized for the output medium, whether it's a specific loudspeaker setup or a different audio playback system. Let's summarize um, these four sections. The first one is pre-processing of signal, uh, input signals or the source. The second one is room effects module or the reverber reverberator. The third one is basically the pan, and the fourth one is the decoder. The next question is, what is SPAT's approach as an audio engine to create room effects? SPAT relies on an object-based internal model, which means that the room effect is divided again into four temporal sections that are filtered and panned independently. The four sections are as follows. The first one is a direct sound. This refers to the initial sound that reaches the listener without any reflections or reverberation. It represents the sound that travels directly from the sound source to the listener. 
The next one is the early reflections. These are the first reflections of sound that occur after the direct sound reaches the listener. Early reflections contribute to the perception of the room's spatial characteristics and help create a sense of depth and dimension. The next one is the late diffuse reflections. These are subsequent reflections of sound that have undergone multiple scattering and reflections within the room. Late diffuse reflections contribute to the overall ambience and re reverberation in the listening environment. And then last one is the reverb tail. This refers to the decay of the reverberation over time. It represents the lingering sound that persists after the direct sound and early reflections have decayed. The reverb tail contributes to the perception of spaciousness and can be adjusted to create different reverberation qualities. Now we can go to SPAP pan, which is an external object for panning and spatialization of audio signals. SPAT pan has a polymorphic nature, which means that the object can take on different forms or behaviors based on its attributes or configuration. The SPAT pan object adjusts its functionality based on various attributes such as the number of the input and output channels and the type of spatialization required. SPAT pan object um, supports a wide range of spatialization algorithms. These algorithms include traditional stereo AB or XY or MS or um, other specific spatialization algorithms like VBAP or VBIP, both in 2D or 3D. And of course, also higher order ambisonics. Um, SPAT5 er externals are controlled using OSC syntax. This implies that OSC messages and commands are used to manipulate and adjust the parameters and functionalities of the SPAT5 externals within the SPAT audio engine. OSC is widely used and accepted in the audio community. It facilitates inter-application communication, allowing different software and hardware devices to exchange data. One of the advantages of OSC is its ability to enable interoperability with uh, remote devices through UDP IP. This means that SPAT5 externals can communicate with devices or applications over a network, making it possible to control and exchange audio data remotely. Additionally, OSC is easy to implement, meaning that it can be um, incorporated into software or hardware systems without significant difficulty. If you don't have SPAT, you can download it from the IRCAM website and add it to your Max packages. We will need it for the next tutorial. Thanks.